Okay, hi guys, we're back today, and today we're going to actually do a, a little mini assignment. And so, kind of learning on what we did last day with overriding the handle method, uh, I'm going to show you a program that I'd like you to mimic or copy. So here it is, and I have a, a, trans, I have a transparent image but watch what I'm going to do with it. Ready? So here's my mouse. That's right. I'm dragging the image around the screen. You might think this is difficult to do, but actually it's not. So let's take a look at how you can do this. Let's, I'm now going to give you all the pieces to the puzzle. So dot position will actually change the position of a widget. And that's under the widget class. Okay, next, the next thing you're gonna need is you're going to need to handle specifically these events. FL drag and mainly just FL drag. And it'll, it'll actually work with just this one. But um, FL push, is when you click on it. Now, you're gonna notice that you'll get an error, a slight error in it, in, in the way it drags if you don't use FL push. And I'll explain that uh, solution later. Um, but the other one that I use is uh, FL release. And actually, you don't need to do anything on FL release. However, I did handle it. So it, essentially, I just returned one, but I don't really do anything with that event. Um, now, the other pieces of the puzzle you're going to need is if you go to the FL class, right? So, I mean, if I take you there, if you see how to get there, right, here. And, and now, if you scroll down to FL uh, event X, so it's right there. So event X and there's also event Y. Notice what it says, returns the mouse position of the event relative to the FL window it was passed to. So with this FL.event underscore X, it's a function call, it'll tell you where your event happened. So in other words, for example, for the drag, it'll tell you where the drag happened. And then all you have to do is change the position of the widget based on where you're dragging it. Um, and you're gonna use this in the handle method to catch the drag event, okay? And the last thing uh, that I'm going to suggest you use is that when you drag something, so watch, I'll show you. Okay, so watch this. If I, dr if I drag the, the cartoon image I have, if I, if I only redraw the image that I'm dragging, watch what happens. You can see, now the reason why this is happening is because I'm redrawing the I'm redrawing the the wi the widget that I'm that I'm dragging around, but I'm not redrawing the window. So watch what happens when I redraw the window just by simply um, uh, what's it called? Minimizing it and then maximizing it. Ta-da! So essentially, the problem is that when I minimize and I and I re-maximize again, the window gets redrawn. So I'm I'm actually having to redraw the window as well. So how do I do that from within? Think about this for a second. How do I redraw the window, but not from within the window class, from within the class that I'm dragging around? Now, I'm, now y you probably wouldn't figure this out on your own, but luckily, um, FLTK has a parent uh, method for all widgets. So it returns a pointer to the parent widget. So in this way, you can actually call the redraw on what the, 
the parent of the object that's in the window, which essentially becomes the window. The window is the parent of the child object. The child object in this case is the, is the child that's inside the window, which in our case, you're going to be actually inheriting from, oh, I may have forgotten to mention that. I want you to inherit from FL box. So, so essentially, you're going to go on the internet, go to find some image, uh, preferably a transparent image, right? Because um, when you run it, you don't want it to look, you notice, it, this is actually a box, but you can't really see the box because it's a transparent image. So that's kind of nice. Um, but nonetheless, uh, find a transparent, let's say, PNG image, and using what I have just described to you, make a new class, call it cartoon, for example, and set the image of the FL box, right, which, which is what you're inheriting from. And when you drag it around, right, remember what dragging is, you left click, hold it down, and move the mouse. It should be able to change the position of the, the inherited FL box. Okay? So good luck. So uh, I'll have the, uh, well, actually, pause the video now. That's probably the best thing to do. You don't want to see the solution before you try this because it'll totally ruin uh, the learning experience. So pause it now, and this might take you 45 minutes, depending on how comfortable you are with, uh, with the object-oriented uh, environment. Okay, good luck. Okay, so here is the solution. Um, we are making a new FL box, uh, a, a class that inherits from FL box, and I've just called it Tux, just because I'm dragging around Tux the penguin. And um, so I am calling init method on the parent class. And by the way, notice here, I'm actually also sending a, uh, an image to the initializer for tux. And I notice I don't use that here. But where I do use it is here, where I go self.image. Now, why can I do self.image? Because flbox inherits from widget, and therefore it has a dot .image uh, method. And so then I actually take that picture and I make it the correct size. Also, the cool thing here is, notice I'm not doing here for the width and the height. I'm not doing uh, self.w function call or self.h function call with the brackets. And the reason I'm not doing that is because since it's the initializer, I've got direct access to the width and the height. So I'm just going to use those right here as variables. It's kind of, kind of convenient, right? Now these guys, I'll explain what these guys are later the delta x and the delta y. So here is the magic, so to speak, of this uh, tux class. And I'm overriding handle. So I'm event gets passed into the handle. And I call the parent classes, or the, the base classes, super, or handle uh, method. And now I check to see if the event is a drag, fl drag. If it is a drag, then get the mouse location of that drag. And this is how I do that. Remember, I discussed this earlier in the video. And now, make the position of the tux class to that, lo to that x and y location. Then, and this is the cool thing I discussed earlier about parent, if I only redraw the, uh, the box, then you get that dragging image and the image doesn't get cleaned up because the window has to redraw. Now, what is the instance of my window here? Well, let's scroll down, and you'll notice that I've also created a window class, okay? And the instance of my window class is, uh, or I've actually inherited from FL window and made my own class called win, and all I've done in here essentially is 
just created an, a, a PNG image and sent that to, to create my uh, tux class. And I've called it self.cartoon. Now, my point here is that I would have to redraw the window. And what's the window called? Well, it's called app. So, I, so on line 17 here, I'd have to go app.redraw. Now, will that work? Actually, in Python, it will work. However, this is better code. Because in this, in this way, I'm not relying on Python's ability to access global variables. What I'm doing is I'm getting to that global variable through self. And dot parent takes me up one level and says, yes, this is an FL box, an inherited FL box widget, but it resides inside FL window. And self dot parent gets me that object. Okay, and so therefore I'm calling redraw on the window. So um, let me let me run this. And uh, so well, there's push here, but I'm actually not doing anything in push. I'm just returning one. I've commented these two lines out, and I'm not doing anything with release. I'm just I'm just saying it's handled. Okay. Now if I run this, look what happens. Ready? I'm gonna put my right my mouse right at his belly, click down, and start dragging. And notice instantly, I just moved the mouse a very small distance, and yet the image moved a whole lot of distance. Why is this? Well, the reason is because, if you think about it, so if, we, if this is our window, right, and this is our uh, FL box in a subclass, then if we click here, then this location is where uh, FL dot event um, X and FL dot event Y is, is located. But this location here at the top corner, this is self dot X and self dot y. That's for the widget itself. Remember, this is the x, y location for the widget. But when I, when I ran the program, notice, I'll do it again, I'm not clicking up here. I'm clicking down here. So as soon as I click down, I've clicked down now, and now I'm going to move it. Notice, it moves, th it moves this distance. Okay, so it's there's a there's a what it what I mean it, one way to explain if I kind of blow this up a little bit right there's the delta x and there's the delta y so I want I want those distances account I want those offsets accounted for so that when I actually m end up dragging this thing starting from here, I want um, the image not to be placed here or else it's instantly going to go like that. It's instantly going to travel this distance right as soon as the mouse moves. I don't want that. So I want to subtract from this location to, to say, no, I want the image to be up here. So therefore, I have to take away this delta x and this delta y. So now, therefore, if you go back to the code and you, we look at the code, okay, so we're back at the code. Now, let's take a look-see. That's what these guys are. The dx and the dy is the delta x and the delta y. It, it's the offsets to the top corner of the box. So, now, instead of going self.position just x and y, which is where the mouse is, I don't want that. I comment that out, and I'll take this line instead, which subtracts the delta x and the delta y. Okay? And um, those now where do those guys come from? How do, the, how do I know what... I mean, that's not zero, right? It can't be zero from here. So I'll tell you what, what it is. 
and they're actually created here in push. So when, the, when does event push happen? It's when you push down on the mouse at that point because it depends on where you click, right? So, I mean, if I explain this this way, if I run it again, watch. If I click way down here at the corner, delta x and delta y is going to be much bigger to this top left-hand corner. Whereas if I click much closer to the top left-hand corner, delta x and delta y is going to be much smaller. And yet it works perfectly in both situations. And so that is my, that's the reason why you have to calculate delta x and delta y when you click or when you push down on the left mouse button you're saying the distance between where the push happened and where the top left hand corner of the widget is located that's when you add, you subtract that from uh, the position when you move it okay and the other parts I mean um, my, the, the code actually does work without handling FL release because we're not doing anything in FL release. We're just saying it's, it's been handled. Um, and don't forget that you have to have the else and return uh, the return value from the base class handle. Okay? So you can handle these events, the drag, the push, and the release. But the other ones, you have to let FLTK handle them because you can't subvert stuff. Uh, no, it's not a good idea. This is the proper way of doing it. And essentially, the other part of the code is I've just created a window class because this is object-oriented. And like I said, uh, pretty straightforward. Hope you enjoyed this uh, solution. Hope this gives you a little bit more experience with extending widgets using object-oriented programming. See you next time.